بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویری ویلکم ٹو دس نیو ویڈیو آن پروڈیوسر تھیوری لیڈیز اینڈ جنٹل مین آئی ہیو آلریڈی ایکسپلینڈ تھیوری آف کنزمپشن ان گریٹر ڈیٹیل اینڈ ناؤ آئی ایم اپلوڈنگ سم ویڈیوز آن پروڈیوسر تھیوری سو لیٹ می اسٹارٹ ود دس نیو ویڈیو وچ از آن پروڈیوسر تھیوری Uh, first of all, I would like to say that uh, the second important actor in economics is uh, the firm or producer. Just like we have a consumer or a consumption as uh, the first actor, this is the second actor in uh, economics. A firm is uh, a business entity which combines various uh, goods and services to produce certain amount of output uh, with the sole aim of uh, earning profit and to do that it implies a certain technology uh, if the firm produces a single output uh, from a number of inputs its technology can be represented by a production process a production is a technical or physical way of uh, transforming inputs into output a, a production function describes for e for each vector of inputs of uh, n tuple from x1 up to xn the amount of uh, output q as a function of uh, the input vector uh, can be produced uh, for any fixed level of uh, output q bar the set of input vectors producer that fixed level of uh, uh, q is uh, known as the q level of isoquant so isoquant uh, is nothing but a curve or a line combining various combinations of uh, two inputs in case of two goods case uh, that can be used to produce the given amount of uh, output while in n goods case uh, it is a vector of various inputs Uh, which can be used in various combinations to produce a given level of output. Uh, so n isoquant is just a level set of uh, the function f. When the production function is differentiable, then its partial derivative is known as the marginal product of input i, and marginal product is equal to the change in the total output due to one unit change in uh, input. i the marginal product of input i is denoted by mp uh, which indicates the rate at which output changes per additional unit of the ith input which is implied in the production process the marginal product just like marginal utility in the consumption theory the marginal product is a measure of returns to variable proportion for example uh, it shows how output varies as the proportions in which various inputs are used change on the other hand return to scale measures how output responds when all inputs are changed in the same proportion that is when the entire scale of operation is increased or decreased uh, proportionally uh, in this figure we can see uh, both the uh, returns to variable proportion as well as return to scale as far as returns to variable proportion is concerned it shows how output changes when we keep the amount of uh, x2 units x, uh, x2 input as a constant and we vary or change the amounts of uh, x1 then output Uh, changes along this uh, horizontal axis for example if we imply this much of x2 and this much of x1 then the level of output is given by y0 if we keep amount of x2 constant but we increase the uh, amount of input uh, 2 uh, up to this level then the output level changes to y1 and finally uh, if we increase uh, x1 up to this point and we keep the amount of input 2 uh, the same then the output level produced is uh, given by y4 
On the other hand, return to scales are concerned with how output changes along this uh, uh, line are ray OA. And uh, here it uh, shows that when we increase both inputs x1 and x2 in uh, uh, a fixed proportion, then it shows increase in the output. For example, when we use this much of x1 and this much of x2, we are producing y0 level of output. And if we increase both in the same proportion along this line, then the output level is increased to OY1. And finally, if we increase x1 and x2 uh, up to this point, x1 and up to this point x2, then the output uh, will increase uh, up to y4 level of output. So, we can explain both uh, returns to variable proportion when we keep one variable input fixed and we increase the amount of another input or if we increase both the inputs at the same proportion uh, given by alpha, uh, then we increase output along this uh, OA line. The production function has the property of uh, various return to scale that is constant return to scale, increasing return to scale or uh, decreasing return to scale. Constant return to scale for uh, all t greater than 0 and if, if x belongs to the non-negative or um, n space Euclidean space, then there will be constant return to scale f if f of t x is equal to t f of x that is when t can be completely factor out and uh, it, there will be increasing return to scale if for all uh, t greater than 1 and uh, x is in the n space Euclidean space then f of t x is greater than t f of x and finally there will be decreasing return to scale if for all t greater than 1 and x belongs to the n space Euclidean space then in that case f of t x is less than t f of x. If the production function is homogeneous, then the returns to scale can be associated with that uh, degree of uh, homogeneity. Uh, we may recall that uh, if the production function is homogeneous of degree k and if r r lambda greater than 0 and x is in the uh, uh, positive Euclidean space, then f of lambda x is equal to lambda raised to the power k f of x. For example, if the production function is uh, given by x1 raised to the power alpha and uh, x1 raised to the power beta and if it is, uh, it will be homogeneous of degree k where k is equal to alpha plus beta. That is in case of a uh, Cobb-Douglas production function, the degree of homogeneity is given by alpha plus b. If alpha plus b is equal to 1, then there are constant return to scale. If alpha plus b is less than 0, uh, less than 1, then there is a uh, um, decreasing return to scale and if alpha plus beta is greater than 1, then in that case uh, we have um, increasing return to scale. If the production function is homogeneous of uh, degree k which is greater than 1, uh, there will be increasing return to scale. Uh, and uh, if k is less than 1, that is if degree of homogeneity is uh, less than 1, then in that case there will be a decrease, decreasing return to scale, but the opposite uh, may not be true always. If the production function is homogeneous of uh, degree 1, then there will be constant return to scale and uh, vice versa. That is, if there are constant return to scale, the degree of homogeneity will be equal to 1. If the production function is homogeneous of uh, unity, that is, when k is equal to 1, then in that case, we have constant returns to scale. Uh, the rate at which one input can be substituted by another input without changing the quantity of output produced is shown by minor rate of technical substitution. This is analogous to minor rate of substitution between two goods uh, and that rate shows uh, when one good is substituted by another good. Uh, similarly, the minor rate of substitution shows the rate at which one input or uh, one resource uh, is uh, substituted by another one without changing the amount of uh, output. But in case of minor rate of substitution, it shows the rate at which one 
good can be substituted by another good without changing the level of satisfaction. So, so MRS and MRTS both are analogous. They are alike. MRS is in the consumption theory and MRTS is in the producer theory. So, when uh, the number of goods is equal to 2, then MRTS that is minor rate of substitution of uh, input 1 for uh, input 2 is obtained by taking total differential of the production function or uh, if you can take total differential of Q0 and that will be equal to the marginal uh, product of input 1 divided by change in input 1 plus marginal productivity of uh, X2 input times change in uh, X2 and that will be equal to 0 that is along the same indifference curve or along the same isoquant there will be no change in the output that is why DQ will be equal to 0. And uh, if you simplify that then the finally we can have that marginal rate of technical substitution between input 1 and input 2 is the slope of uh, the isoquant at point x passing through uh, q0. Uh, if n is greater than 2 that is if there are n goods then for any two inputs i not equal to j the minor rate of uh, technical substitution uh, of input i for j input is equal to the negative of the ratio of marginal productivity of uh, ith input to the marginal productivity of j input. In the two input case the production function exhibits a diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution if for any q the absolute value of marginal rate of technical substitution diminishes as x1 uh, increases and x2 is uh, decreasing by isoquant uh, that is f of x1 x2 is equal to q. A diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution is consistent with increasing marginal productivities. A diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution shows that the slope of the isoquant in absolute term is decreasing that is the isoquant are convex to the origin just like just like in difference curves which are convex to the origin. The MRTS is one local measure of substitutability. Uh, between inputs in uh, producing a given level of uh, output. Since minor rate of technical substitution in absolute term is going to decrease, then it shows that uh, the isoquants are convex to the origin or they are concave from above. The elasticity of substitution uh, between two goods in case of uh, consumption is analogous to the elasticity of substitution of uh, two inputs in case of more than uh, two inputs then uh, it is the elasticity of substitution of input j for input i which is defined as the percentage change in the proportion of the two inputs associated with 1% increase or 1% change in the minor rate of technical substitution. Uh, between input uh, i and j holding all other inputs a and the output level is constant. So, it means that we will just uh, change the proportion of the two inputs, but we will keep all other inputs constant and the level of uh, output will also be constant. For a production function f of x the elasticity of substitution of input j for input i at point x naught uh, is in the strictly positive um, Euclidean space and it is defined by this equation number 1 where xr is the unique vector of inputs that is x is equal to x1 up to xn such that number 1 xj divided by x i is equal to r that is the proportion of the two inputs and number 2 xa is equal to uh, xk naught for a given uh, level for all k not equal i j and number 3 f of x is equal to f of x naught. The, then the elasticity of substitution uh, is a measure of the curvature of the i j isoquant through x naught through x at x naught. When the production function is quasi concave that is when uh, it is greater than or equal to 0. Uh, then we have convex isoquants which imply that uh, as the ratio of the two inputs increases it implies that uh, minor rate of technical substitution in absolute is also going to increase. 
uh, the lower the value of the elasticity of substitution the lesser the degree of substitutability between the two inputs the greater the value of the elasticity of substitution the easier it is to substitute between the inputs if the inputs are completely substitutable then we have uh, that the inputs are that the isoquants are straight line negatively sloped straight line as shown in panel a in this figure and uh, if there is a uh, no substitutability at all between the two inputs then isoquants are showed by uh, l shaped isoquants are uh, right angle and uh, in that case the substitutability between the two inputs is uh, equal to zero and this is shown by panel c in this figure and uh, if there is a limited uh, substitutability between the two inputs x i1 and x2 uh, then we have the regular uh, shape of the isoquants which are negatively sloped which are convex to the origin and uh, various uh, isoquants don't intersect each other so this is how uh, we can say that uh, how you can relate the uh, elasticity of substitution with the shape of uh, isoquants after that we may consider a firm or a producer that looks for optimal demand for each input i where i varies from 1 to n to minimize the cost of production of producing q units of output given the prevailing technology the input price must be strictly greater than zero because price cannot be negative and the cost of minimizing problem the cost minimization problem of the firm takes the following form which is that uh, minimize the inputs cost subject to a given level of output we are uh, there are uh, inputs from x1 up to xn and they are multiplied by their relative prices and that cost of uh, producing a given level of uh, uh, given input uh, should be minimized the objective function is linear in the decision variable that is x1 x2 up to xn which are inputs Hence, if the production function exhibits some kind of concavity, that is, if it is concave, and uh, there is an integral solution uh, that can be solved using the Lagrangian method. Ladies and gentlemen, you already know how we can use Lagrangian multiplier uh, to optimize. In case of cost minimization, we minimize the cost subject to the given level of output, and in case of uh, output maximization uh, we uh, maximize output subject to the cost constraint the solution is denoted by xic which is a function of price and uh, output and that determines conditional demand for input i which is conditional on the level of uh, output given by q all products all cobb douglas production functions are indirectly concave on uh, non negative earth and or uh, n space to radian space uh, that uh, we proved but we proved that not all of them are concave they may be quasi concave but not strictly concave uh, we must note that uh, in the two input case the cobragras Co production function given by k x1 raised to the power alpha and x2 raised to the power uh, beta that is sorry this is a, a typo this should be x2 that is written as uh, by taking natural log on both sides, it should be uh, that uh, the production function is uh, raised to the power e raised to the power natural log of uh, uh, k plus alpha natural log of uh, x1 plus beta natural log of uh, x2. Uh, this is how you can write the given co Douglas production function. Uh, this is strictly increasing transformation of the concave function that is natural log of k plus uh, alpha natural log of x1 plus beta natural log of x2 that is th this function is indirectly concave if the production function is strictly increasing at uh, x raised the power c the constraint is binding at the solution and lambda is greater than zero which implies that uh, at equilibrium point the slope of isoquant given by minor rate of technical substitution is equal to the slope of isocast curve 
where uh, Px is uh, given to some given uh, fixed cast and that passes through Xc which is the relative price ratio that is price of uh, input i and price of input j. That is for all ij where i is not equal to j then we have that margin rate of technical substitution in absolute form should be equal to the uh, price ratio of uh, input i to price ratio of j and they should be equal to the marginal productivity of uh, i at uh, given x and uh, marginal productivity of j at conditional demand for x and we may notice that uh, there is similarity between this equation 4 and the optimal condition of consumer theory where mrs uh, of ij at uh, given x uh, is equal to marginal utility of uh, good i to marginal utility of good j and that should be equal to the price of uh, good i and uh, price of j. So, there is um, similarity between the these two equation which we are for where equation number 4 is in the production theory and equation number 5 is from uh, the theory of consumption. Uh, if the production function is continuous, it is strictly increasing and strictly quasi concave and uh, the price factor is uh, strictly positive, the cost function satisfies the pa following properties. The cost function is strictly increasing in uh, output, it is also increasing in uh, price of input and it is homogeneous of degree 1 in P and it is concave in P and the cost function is differentiable in P and the partial derivative of the cost function with respect to the price of uh, ith input is the conditional demand for uh, input i which is a function of uh, price of that input and uh, uh, output level. The proof of these properties are analogous are alike to the proof given for the expenditure function in case of uh, the production theory. Finally, we may also uh, discuss the profit function. When the profit function is well defined, it possesses several properties and uh, that should be familiar to all of us. If the production function is continuous and it is strictly increasing and strictly concave and uh, PQ is uh, greater than 0 and the price factor that is price of each input is uh, strictly positive, the maximum value function of the profit function satisfies the following property that is the profit function is increasing in uh, PQ the profit function is decreasing in price p the profit function is homogeneous of degree 1 in pq and uh, p the profit function is convex in pq and p and the profit function is differentiable in uh, pq and p and that is hotling's lemma and given by these equations ladies and gentlemen this is a uh, a brief explanation of the producer theory as I mentioned earlier, I have already explained the consumption theory and now in this video I try my level best to explain and interpret the producer theory. I hope uh, this was quite interesting for you. Uh, kindly subscribe to this channel and do not forget to click on the bell icon so that uh, you can get a notification about my new video that I will upload for you. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Uh, you, you may share this video and this channel with your pre with your friends, with your colleagues uh, and uh, with your um, fellow researchers so that they could get benefit of this. Thank you. See you in another video.